Good morning, folks. We've got a little space weather, some top science news, a special clip, new material from Dr. Robitaille, and somehow my face ends up in this video twice. Let's get started at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun was mostly quiet. Mostly. It's hard to see on the southern hemisphere, but a small filament lifted and pushed out what's about half a stealth CME. Coronagraphs do show a faint plasma cloud that will likely give us a glancing blow in three days, but it will be nothing major. Meanwhile, the solar wind is currently calm, but that is unlikely to continue. In addition to the thin equatorial coronal hole turning through, we've got a second one right behind it, likely to enhance solar wind early next week. And we also have no choice but to go back on flare watch. This active region on the north developed company and saw it decay once already, trying it again now in its own backyard to the north with beta class magnetism early this morning. A couple quakes to mention. Top one of the day was way south of New Zealand. We also had a six-pointer downgraded in Japan. That was a blood echo along with the other one nearby. And folks, La Palma has hit magnitude four. I had previously mentioned that that's where we'll more closely monitor the landslide breakoff points. We'll be doing that moving forward. Quick note on a weird space image. Usually I make fun of astronomers for being mystified, but this one's a doozy. Their best guess is a triply lensed galaxy coming through this foreground cluster, which you see all around the rest of the frame, and splitting like the surface water outlines on the bottom of a swimming pool. Definitely three appearances of the same background object. Up next, let's go to a new animation by Goddard SVS, showing the tracking of an atmospheric river as it developed and began pounding the west coast. The storm was from back in January, but it was the first that let them begin a new deeper dive on the dynamics of those systems. Two blasts from the past here. The first is the early rise of humanoid species and persistent occupation and development of tooled culture from over a million years ago up to the arrival of our slightly different ancestors. Fun archaeology there. Shooting up in the timeline next, we find evidence that the oceans 100,000 years ago ran inland 120 miles in Mexico. The discovery of mangrove fossils so far inland gives a surprising look at how our world constantly reinvents itself at the surface. Folks, the first of a couple interviews with Dr. Pierre-Marie Robitaille can be found on the Demystifying Science channel I linked for you below. Ivy League chaps here having fun with science and doing key interviews on controversial topics. It's an important job. By the way, Dr. Robitaille himself has a new video out, breaking down a lot of where he has appeared for you to see, including the talks he's done at our conferences and our mentions on the channel. Dr. Robitaille is the pretty one on the right, and he has gone and hunted down every one of those conference talks and other times we've shared his science, listed them out for us below his video, for those who love his channel and just can't get enough. Let's move on to a topic we'll have eyes on more closely in the coming months. Parker Probe finding anomalous oxygen in the inner system, and what the abstract says is the amount they found agrees with the previous result from 45 years ago. And yes, it falls within the error bars, but on the higher end of that error range from before. If later Parker Probe results continue that trend, we may have to ignore those error bars and suggest that indeed anomalous oxygen is increasing. On the other hand, Ozone is decreasing, and as much as I truly do love the NCAR and UCAR folks who gave us most of what we know about the global electric circuit, a minor spanking is in order today. Their models suggest that taking out ozone-destroying chemicals is saving lives and will continue to do so. Such is the problem with models. We've recently gone over the real-world observational data, which trumps models every time. And while the southern ozone hole has been shrinking with the altered chemistry, that's not the case in the rest of the world. Literally, nowhere else is that positive trend holding, and with the south specifically, the 2020 ozone marks nearly hit zero during the southern vortex season. Sadly, the ozone is in trouble as Earth's magnetic field fades and more solar protons get in. This is the front man speaking. Yes, new policies are in place. The next game can begin. For the next game, we will be playing Demonetization. Let me repeat the instructions. Any player who calls climate science a hoax, denies the planet is warming, or questions humans' role in climate change, will be eliminated. So I guess that puts me in this role, Inspector Royale. <laughs> Good rain does know the best time to fall. Let's play. 
We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.